which is a 30 minute drive from here. Um, and we'll be staying for varying lengths of time at each winery, but about between 45 and 50 minutes, <laughs> varying lengths of time with a five minute variable. So we'll be at the first winery for about 45 minutes. Then the next one is just a little drive around the corner, 10 to 15 minute drive around the corner. And then we drive back towards Napier and we go to Mission Estate, which is out on the hills, out the back of Napier and is New Zealand's oldest winery. Land rose up three meters or nine feet during this earthquake. So it was, it was very hearty. So it really changed Napier forever. Um, while we stopped at maybe the first winery, I will walk around with a map showing you the land before and on. Is um, underneath us is where two tectonic, pl tectonic plates meet, the Australian plate and the Pacific plate. And one, goes under the other and is pushing up the top plate whenever we have an earthquake. Thankfully, we're on the top plate, so we're going up in the world, baby. From there, it's so big. So at the moment, delegates have two wineries, two smaller wineries here in Hawke's Bay, and they must be doing well because they have built that monster and they're going to shut down the two just after three o'clock. The maths is bad on that. That makes no sense. Oh yeah, no, it's supposed to be quarter past two. So you're leaving here just after three o'clock. However, I won't leave without anyone. <coughs> leave no man or woman behind. So you're just gonna follow this pathway at the front of the bus and into the left. We do have the testament red wine um, and I'll give it a go we do have some cheese here as well and uh, grapes in that so see how it tastes you can have mine ah. really strong? not too strong has that kind of sharp red wine it tastes really nice though Mm. What are you having? Mm. Oh, like pecans and something. Mm -hmm. Yum. See you guys. Enjoy your trip. So that is our first wine tasting. At Abby's um, Cellar, I think. Abby's Stillery. No, Cellar. Cellery. Oh, Cellery. That's the vineyard there for them. And this is the vineyard that we have on the side here um, but it was really nice we had to try like six six wines really delicious. Um, combination of red white and then a dessert wine which is the last one and now we're going to the bus to go in the next um, next winery place
and then that I'm not sure what's on our left it might be garlic or onions in that field so we really do grow it all around here there are three roads that form the triangle and there are just vineyards and wineries all over the place i can see some tanks in the distance over there so we're going to turn right up here at this next road and head down the second road of the golden triangle and then turn right into Ngātarua Road, the third road, where Ngātarua Māori, basically, in the Māori language. Near the start of it, it will sound like I'm swearing in English, and you've probably experienced this in New Zealand already. There's a lot of place names that start with W-H-A-K-A, <laughs> whaka, but, it mean, but it's Māori, and it means it's a verb to make. So that comes up at the start of this longest place name. But the longest place name in the world is Tomata Fakatangi Hanga Koiwo or Tamatea Turi Pukaka Piki Monga Horo Nuku Pokai Fenua Kitana Tahu. I'll say it for you again. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, I'll say it for you again. Tomata Fakatangi Hanga Koiwo or Tamatea Turi Pukaka Piki Monga Horo Nuku Pokai Fenua Kitana Tahu. And that relates to an event that happened way back in the day. So what that translates to in English, yeah, there's some sheep, some shorn sheep. All sheep around here are going to end up on our dinner plates, I hate to tell you. We don't breed sheep on the North Island just for wool. So a lot of them are wool and meat, and some are just meat. Place name, what it means in English is Tamatea, who was a local Māori chief. Tamatea slid down the hill on his knees, crying and playing his flute. And it refers to um, an event where there was a war between two Māori tribes out around by that hill and Tamatea's brother was killed in the war. And so Tamatea climbed to the top of that hill and he sat up there for a week mourning his brother and playing his kōwōwō, which is a Māori flute, which is a really mournful, mournful instrument. And obviously at some point he fell down the hill as well because Tamatea slid down the hill on his knees crying and playing the flute is what that place name means. That we've taken them off the main road. So now we're just coming down this third road of the Golden Triangle. So you get a pottle of ice cream. Now if you run out of time here and you still have your ice cream to eat you are most welcome to bring it on the coach and eat it on the coach and when you're finished finish with it just put your pottle on the floor and when we're at the next winery I'll pick all those up. That is so beautiful. Yeah look at that. Head over for the tables and trees guys. Thank you. Wow it's like something out of the city or something. Look at those trees man. Oh, right. Yeah, you're only about five minutes. <laughs> a nice place it is, too. Yeah. Damn Except nice. you've got lots of people there. It all started with an Irishman who came to New Zealand in roughly 1865 and he met, fell in love, and married a Maori princess, Princess Arini. And she was from, on the other side of these hills is the coast and there's a beach there called Waimurama. And she was from there and she owned land 19 kilometres wide from Waimurama to the middle of the North Island which is Mount Murupatu. So she was very wealthy in her own right. <coughs> so George presentation, so it's got a little bit of acidity. If it's total, Thank you. it means it's very creamy. What do you think this yeah. tree is? Chestnut. All the yeah. ones from the UK should know. Oh, chestnut. No. Oh, I've had a lot of Americans, and all the Americans like salted caramel. So we've got, um, what have we got? We've got hokey pokey, which is um, like honeycomb chips and vanilla ice cream. We've got um, Fijoa, which is our fruit here in New Zealand, which is really nice. You must try that. Um, we've got Manuka honey, which is a new one, and a couple of others I can't remember. Yet. I'm sorry, darling, I'd love to give you some, but your mum says no. Yes, yeah.
Come here. Ooh. So cute. Given a haircut recently, so um, a couple of months ago driving a bus down the middle, the branches were pressed up against the windows of the bus, threatening to break the windows, so they do keep them very well trimmed. So they managed to squeeze about 27,000 people into that paddock. And you're all up the hillside, drunk, falling down the hill, not even paying attention to poor old Phil. Oh well. earthquake. Um, it's a very American style of building. So the town that was destroyed was very English, very Victorian, lots of filigree and curvy ornate stuff, whereas this is super plain, super simple. So it would have been a real shock to the small town people that lived here when they got this rebuild. They built 161 buildings in the downtown in the two years following the earthquake, which is an amazing feat really. Now along this waterfront road there's a few buildings that survived the earthquake, in fact there's quite a lot either way but we're just going to see two in particular as we come along here. This white building on our left was built in 1905 and half of the people on the bus are not welcome there, that's the Hawke's Bay Club and to this day is men only, so yeah. And just down on our right, you can see a little concrete wall. That's the old sea wall. So this land that we're on here, it was above the ground, uh, sea before the earthquake, but it rose up a further metre or three feet in the earthquake. And the sea receded back. So where the little concrete wall is, you can only just see the top of it now. Before the earthquake, um, at high tide, the ocean came up to just below that wall. However, however the sea has receded back quite a lot post-earthquake. And here we are back at the port. <laughs>